just heard of this super interesting new game. It's super balanced. Actually, everyone has a fair chance of winning. It's called Rock, Paper, Scissors. I mean, Karjitsu. I mean, Overwatch? Games that are truly balanced will usually end up becoming close to Rock, Paper, Scissors games. In other words, unless the game has the same characters on all teams like chess, an arena shooter, or massive teams, the difference between each character means that if the player's skill is the same, the game is decided from the character select screen. Rock, Paper, Scissors, shit. Rock, Paper, Scissors, shit. Overwatch is in one of its most balanced states according to the developers, and upon looking at it, sure, it's pretty balanced. The only problem is that's just not fun. It's just accepted that you counter swap constantly, which means playing one character just isn't as viable or rewarding in a truly balanced game as it would be in a less balanced one. It's like you're being punished for your monogamy. A truly balanced game isn't satisfying. A game with good game feel needs to reward the player for their skill and allow a player to improve along with allowing different playstyles. When a game is truly balanced, you lose this. As you either need to be familiar with all the characters, which can be a lot. I mean, I've seen social security numbers with less numbers. The other problem is as games that have more unique characters, it becomes more difficult to balance. Which is more valuable, a damage boost or speed? Not having credit card debt or skins? Some of life's toughest philosophical questions, ones that would stump Aristotle himself. Game feel is incredibly important and works with balance. Rewarding a player for their skill is essential, which is why balancing the power or effectiveness of a character doesn't work. How dare you play that broken ass character? We're playing 3D World. Okay, so balancing for single player games is a little more lenient even than balancing for multiplayer, as having more and less powerful characters is a great way to scale difficulty naturally. However, when it's an online game, if you're making a character like, say, Bastion, on the same level as Tracer, there's a problem. There's no reason to play the character who requires more skill when you gain the same or even more value on the less skillful hero. Similar applies to other games like fighting games, and while I'm definitely not inept at fighting games, I'm definitely not a pro. However, games that have more balanced rosters, ones where for this piece of shit isn't necessary. The game becomes this rock, paper, scissors of who is stronger in this matchup provided the players are skilled enough. This sort of design is balanced, but not fun. Having S to F tier characters makes a game more fun because it makes you have a reason to play more skill based characters and improve in general. So while we're on the topic of skill, let's talk about skill floor and skill ceilings. Skill floor is the minimum skill to provide value on a character while skill ceiling is the maximum value you can reasonably provide on a character. A character like Tracer has a decently high skill floor but a near infinitely high skill ceiling, while a character like Mercy has a low skill floor and had a high skill ceiling, they then nerfed that, but my point still stands. Anyways, skill floor and ceilings are important to consider. Most characters should be accessible, but the most powerful should require skill to gain value, which is why when a skill based character is the meta, no matter what the game is, it's more fun. This is the mistake many games run into. I mean, would melee, for example, be the same had Fox not been the classic character played? That's a serious question. I'm not a competitive Smash player. In other games, balance is even less important. In Mario Party, is it really a problem if Donkey Kong averages a higher dice roll than Bowser? No, it's a little funny, but part of Mario Party is being like real life, unfair, painful, and constantly being taxed. So even there, the game benefits from not being perfectly balanced. A competitive game is best characterized by its imbalances, at least when the imbalances skill was skill. In other words, they're just being strictly better characters or vehicles in a game like Mario Kart kinda sucks to play against, as that's not rewarding skill, it's rewarding a Google search. While in a game like Smash, Overwatch, or Battles 2, having a meta reward skill will always be more fun. It's not fun to play Battles 2 when the Super Monkey is meta, same as it's not fun to play Overwatch when Orisa is meta. It's Brick Wall Simulator and Smash players scare me! While in single player games, the goal should not be what is balanced, as it's single player, if it's fun and not harmful to the game, it is just how it should be. Is it balanced? 
challenge that you can bypass basically all of Minecraft's challenge just by farms to generate infinite iron, emeralds, indirectly diamonds, or almost anything else you might need? No, but it sure is fun to figure out what my next base is going to be built around. This one was bamboo, this one was villagers, and this one was poor decision making. Yes, the walls are all obsidian, and yes, I did mine it all by hand in survival. What is fun to me is not necessarily what will be fun for the next person. Exhibit A. However, designing a game and prioritizing balance in a varied roster is a recipe for failure. A game prioritizing game feel is really important. I mean, despite games like 3D World and the new soup games being piss easy, they are still really fun because the core gameplay and level design is still enjoyable, even if they have power-ups that trivialize the game. Little Timmy Moe's, they were necessary when I was a child and couldn't complete every level. They're good features. They were incredibly powerful and not balanced, yes, but it allowed for more players to enjoy the game, and better players just don't need to take them. If we remove balance as a considering factor and instead focus on what is fun, we see much more opportunities in game design. We should allow for there to be characters who are just plain better, as long as those characters are fun, skill-based, and not reducing other players' fun. Why shouldn't they be stronger than less fun or less skill-based options? I mean, seriously, I don't think anyone enjoys always playing brick wall simulator despite that we spent an entire season where this brick wall was the only viable way to not get walked over. As long as the game allows for a difference in play styles, rewarding more skillful play, there is no reason to consider balance. A quasi-balance will appear as long as the game rewards and encourages different play styles as well as rewarding skill. Ever since games have gotten more complex than just mirroring the board and saying job well done, we have seen balance become more and more of an issue. Even then in chess, white moves first and has the advantage, and yet that's not considered a problem now, is it? I guess another way you could look at it is as long as no character has an advantage over another, perfect balancing would be fun. However, how the fuck are you gonna do that? Clearly a melee character is just gonna be walked over by a character who can move and stay at range. Same can be said for snipers and squishes. Unless you have classes that make literally zero changes to characters, it's impossible to not have minor advantages or disadvantages between each character or appeal. Which is why if a game is perfectly balanced, it becomes this rock, paper, scissor game from the character select screen. Imbalance is what makes a game fun. When a game is a live service, it becomes easy for balance to be moved into and it will be sorted out later stage, which is fine. But honestly, if we can't have skill-based balance, a more flavor of a month style of balance is preferable to a perfectly balanced game anyways. Especially when we try to balance and we lose characters' identities. Imagine, your main has their entire design around being mobile, agile, and able to escape your enemies due to their intricate and insane movement. Then imagine developers step in, double its cooldown, when no changes to the rest of the moveset to compensate. Despite the fact this character's abilities are so fucking utterly broken, I would have better luck trying to turn water into wine than having this fucking ability work on the first try character built around being a class cannon gets their survivability buffed, making them one of the worst characters to be playing against. Both designs before they got balanced were built to reward skill, but due to the changes, the way they played were entirely changed. The first character I described went from actively playing with whoever was the most aggressive to sit there, pocket your most effective player, and be ready to run at any time. As you were punished for using your movement in fun or creative ways, it ruined what was so fun about that character. Which is a different conversation entirely, but balance changes can entirely change a character's playstyle just by making something more or less powerful. It made the game more balanced but at the cost of fun and fluidity of play. Making a glass cannon more survivable just makes it a cannon. And last I checked, getting hit by a cannonball isn't all that fun, but maybe that's outdated information. It's not. It also made the characters less skilled, because now it's much more difficult to punish them for playing poorly, or much less capable of using skill expression. So what do these examples show? That when you're trying to balance a game, making changes to have a character more in line with the intended balance can utterly kill the fun of a character, or make playing against them turn into one of the most unenjoyable gaming experiences possible. Additionally, people who play off-meta picks are more than often fine with them being those. I know many niche communities 
Indies prefer to only have mains on their sacred characters, but it really is fine to have characters with lower skill ceilings be less powerful, especially as until the player reaches the top level, they can stay competitive by just being more skilled on that character than others at that rank, making up for that character's lack of power or unfavorable matchups, as that's just the cost of one tricking, and if they do reach the top level, they will have to work much harder to gain more value out of that character, but still, ultimately, it rewards skill. And that's fine, that's their decision. It makes when you see a top level player on this rare character, it's something you respect more than someone who only plays hard meta. At the top level, skill expression should be high enough that the players themselves will be the determining factor, not their characters. Especially as a player on a lower skill ceiling character can make up for that lower skill cap in other ways. If it's a team based shooter, you, you can communicate and have good game sense on what ults the enemy has. Especially as the more skill a character requires, the more likely a mistake can be punished or attention will have to go into playing the character. Especially as the more skill a character requires, the more likely a mistake can be punished or attention will have to go into playing the character perfectly. Less attention will be going into the match as a whole. There are really good pro players who even if they were on worse characters can make up for it with smart decision making on how to punish mistakes, which is why the most skill-based characters being meta is just better for a game and its health, as it results in more windows where mistakes can be punished, but in perfect play, the better player is the deciding factor. Allowing for varied playstyles is important, and when you have a balanced game, players who prefer to stick to one or just a few characters have to play a lot of other characters, which just isn't fun for those sort of people. When the meta is just a list of the most skilled characters to the least, skilled, the players who are really good at each character, even the weak ones, will still be able to make up for that difference. As the difference in a good game between an S and a D tier character shouldn't be that big, it should be apparent but not massive, as to reward the players able to play those more skill reliant characters, but still allow for those who find less mechanically intensive characters to still be viable and enjoy the game, making up for the lack of mechanical intensity with game sense or movement. The reason for skill being the determining factor in how a game should balance its characters is because at the top level it means if the players play well enough they are rewarded. If it's an off day their performance can reflect that and it allows for mistakes to be punished. When there are low skill characters in the meta, top level players can fall asleep and still win, as all they're doing is cosplaying a brick wall anyways. Additionally, a higher skilled meta means there is meta diversity between the top and low levels. Games become incredibly difficult to design and balance for the more different everything is. If all the differences between each class is just effective range, sure, that's not too hard to balance, but games that have the variance between each character be massive like Overwatch, Smash, or battles too are essentially impossible to balance fairly, and so that is why balancing in a way that rewards skill is much more important than trying to have all characters be equal. Making every character viable on every map is similarly ineffective and painful to play against, because if they received buffs for a different map, when it's a map in their favor it's just a shit stomp. Especially considering that a map based meta is fun, and a much better indicator of game balance than any statistic, as it means that minor differences on the ground you play on is enough to decide the stronger team. The most important thing that many games seem to forget is that they are games. Things can be in balance and that's okay. When you have a skill based meta built in a top down way, you will see a wide variety of characters played depending on the rank. While at the top level you may see a lot of highly skilled characters, in mid ranks a wide variety of high mid and low skill characters, and low skill characters in the lowest, that should be how a game is balanced, with the skill levels deciding what is the most effective pick, more than the power of each character. Which is why a game's balance should reflect the skill required for a character opposed to any other method of balancing like win rate or general power. The only way to make a game perfectly balanced is for it to either be RNG dependent, identical teams, or for it to be GG no re from the character select screen, which is why this pursuit of balance does not work. Shit, I'm reading from the Declaration of Independence again.